And welcome back once again. The 121 year old Liverpool Football Club has more European titles than any other English club and a fan base that is both passionate and loyal all over the world. That's why American businessmen Tom Hicks and George Gillette bought the franchise in 2007. But crippling debt and disagreements between the two owners led to a backlash that saw the team sold in 2010 to the Fenway Sports Group, the owners of the Boston Red Sox. FSG appointed Ian Eyre, the commercial director hired under Hicks and Gillette three years prior as the new managing director of the team. Eyre is leading Liverpool into new financial, digital, and geographical territories, and he spoke with Mike Lozanian at the Forbes offices for our Sports Money Profile. Did you have any second thoughts about coming to Liverpool when you were offered the job? I mean, you had your own successful sports marketing firm at the time, and uh, there was a little bit of chaos around the time of the Hicks and Gillette ownership. Were you thinking, well, maybe I don't want to do this? I was kind of peering in from Southeast Asia, and um, I kind of knew some of the issues that existed there. And I also... I mean, I'm from Liverpool. I, I grew up in the streets around uh, where the stadium is. So, you know, it was my team. I watched the team from when I was sort of seven or eight years old with my father. Um, and I always felt that I'd personally had a lot of great experiences in sport, in marketing, in business, particularly in Asia, some in Europe. And, you know, I think uh, it felt like a little bit of a calling for me and, and an opportunity to come and hopefully try to make a difference. And um, and, that's, and it's been a real journey. How is being owned by Fenway Sports Group, which obviously owns the Boston Red Sox and Major League Baseball, helped you make inroads into the United States? Uh, it's been very successful collaboration, really, in many ways. Um, and it's, it's great at, at various levels. Um, in terms of running the business day to day, um, I have a fantastic dialogue with our ownership group, but also my whole management team has a daily sort of interaction with different people across Fenway itself. So whether it's finance or media or marketing or other, there's, there's all sorts of dialogue going on all the time. And that's a mixture of, you know, just general business management, but also sharing best practice, you know, things they might have tried at the Red Sox or Roush Fenway or Nesson and using that experience. And likewise, the other way, you know, we're probably the only global brand in the portfolio and therefore you know, playing that back the other way and the experience we have in my team um, makes for a, a great relationship. And in terms of the US market, I think we saw the strongest sort of element of that was last summer when we brought the team here for the tour. Um, obviously, we already had, uh, which is quite unusual, we had a, you know, a strength in terms of the manpower that we had on the ground in the US. And then there's a, there's a division of Fenway Sports Group, Fenway Sports Marketing, that team, the sponsorship team that generate revenue for the Red Sox and Nesson and, and Roush Fenway work sort of tirelessly on Liverpool's behalf in the US to try and attract sponsors. And probably the best two examples of that was their collaboration with me on the Warrior deal and more recently on the deal we did with Chevrolet. So those deals came to Liverpool because of the relationship with Fenway Sports Group and, and their ability to tap into the US market. And that's a great way uh, to bring the two brands together, if you like. You joined the Royal Navy when you were only 16 years old. What did you take away from that experience that's helped you at Liverpool? Quite a lot, actually. Um, yeah, I joined the Navy. I, I kind of felt uh, I wanted to kind of go and see a little bit more than Liverpool. And uh, it, it's worked in that sense. Uh, you know, I, it was the thing that opened the world up to me. It was the thing that took me to Asia. I was based in Hong Kong for five years. Um, but I think it also, you know, the, one of the things they teach you in the military is about working as a team, about your responsibility to others, about what is really important and not important. And so, you know, in a very high impact, stressful role, such as the one I have now, there are lots of lessons I learned from that. But I think the thing that I took the most from it was that um, in, in being exposed to lots of different cultures, you understood that, that principle of everybody's slightly different and, and the world is a very big place and it's not one size fits all. And, and they're the lessons I think that have been most effective for me in this job because you know, I will never ever please everybody because it's just not possible. Um, but what we do is we have to find the right way of understanding what is right for the majority of Liverpool fans, where they are in the world, what, how they support the team. And as long as we get that right, as long as we 
deliver the best we can deliver for as many people as possible, then we'll be doing the right thing. And you know, that's not just me. That's there's a whole bunch of people, all of the players, the manager, all of the coaching staff, and all the team that work with me on a daily basis. They're all very focused on that same thing. You know, one family, unity, respect. Um, and they're the values that, that, that we're you know that we're trying to instill throughout the club. They're the values that exist within our fan base, and you know by by being that way and being all the same and being together, you know we'll be uniquely Liverpool. All right, so Michael, let's talk about how this purchase has worked out for FSG. I think it's worked out great. Look, they bought a distressed asset in 2010 for $477 million. It's worth over $600 million now, at least by my calculations. And, and I like what Ian's doing with the team. In essence, what he's trying to do, Bob, he's trying to make the business as big as the brand. Liverpool's a global brand. They have sponsorships in places as like Indonesia, for example, the airlines there. So what is he doing? He's playing a friendly match in Thailand this year very smart you get the people there you get more sponsors interested in putting money into your team when they know you're going to go out and get their potential customers engaged and that's what he's doing as well as of course last year he played a friendly over in Fenway Park and that's the way to get the fans in the United States engaged now he's not directly involved obviously with the Boston Red Sox but this helps the Red Sox as well right in terms of building their global brand I would think that's a great uh, point Bob because when you got a guy like Henry who's very smart what you see him do is he's got a marketing business. He signs LeBron James, but as part of that deal, gives him a slice of Liverpool. So he's tying in all his assets, and that's going to help Ian grow the business. All right. That's going to do it for us in another edition of Forbes Sports Money. We thank all of our guests for their participation. And as always, we thank you for watching and look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.